Do you have bumps on your scalp? Do they hurt? Is it bleeding, burning, itching? You may have scalp folliculitis. Hi, I'm Dr. Nina and here on my channel, we help you get to the root cause of all of your health concerns and hair loss. Okay, so folliculitis. What is folliculitis? Folliculitis is inflammation of the scalp. So the scalp can become inflamed with bacteria and you will see sometimes red bumps on the scalp, pustles, sore, itchiness, hurts to touch. And if untreated, folliculitis can cause hair loss and scarring. So you're probably wondering, okay, so how do I get folliculitis? I hear this a lot from my clients. And to be honest with you, there is one known case of how you can get folliculitis and it's from steroids. So if you are giving steroid or cream, the skin is more sensitive and easily to be infected. A cut can also cause it. Razor bumps, um, unclean razor can cause folliculitis. I see it a lot in my male clients who go to the barber a lot, um, has folliculitis. Um, so there are many different cases where you can get it, but just keep in mind that pretty much is happening where the hair pops out at. So if any, you know, bacteria get into that area, it will become inflamed. You know, folliculitis is one of the inflammatory scalp conditions that we typically see a lot. So there are more and more cases of this inflammatory scalp condition, predominantly I'm going to say in the black community. And it's pretty interesting why we see it a lot in our community. And I think we are exposed to a lot of chemicals that we're sensitive to, in addition to the norm. Like if you, like I mentioned before, like if you go to the barber shop, if you get a cut, steroids. But these chemicals, these environmental toxins is causing a lot of inflammatory scalp conditions and unfortunately folliculitis is one of them. I've seen folliculitis in cases where a client was as young as seven years old and as old as I would say about 60 years old. It can male, female, it, it really doesn't matter. I had a client, this is interesting, she had, I would probably say, all of the products inside of the beauty supply store from the wild growth oil, which is very popular, from the hair fertilizer, it comes in a little tube and it's like a thick grease and it's supposed to promote hair growth. I've also seen a lot of clients who were using the henna. For some reason, there was cases where the henna was causing this particular type of inflammation on the scalp. Now that tells you because hen henna is supposed to be natural. And I did see um, some information where a lot of the henna that was coming into the States wasn't really like true organic henna that we would see back in the day. So a lot of times what I tell my clients is, is that you really want to make sure that you're looking on the back of these labels and really doing research and then the company that you're getting your products from do some research on them to make sure that you're getting the best of something and if I can give you any advice I would say pretty much stay away from a lot of the products that you see inside of the beauty supply store because most of these products is not really formulated here in the states um, and you we really don't know the how can I say quality of the products. Beauty products, is there is no quality control when it comes to beauty products. So right now we're just getting exposed to a, a lot of things. Okay, so let's talk about some do's and don'ts. So we'll get started with the do's. So when you have folliculitis, it is so important that you shampoo your hair. You wanna shampoo your hair. I typically in the beginning stages will have my client shampoo their hair every three days. That's going to help remove some of the dead skin that's on top of the scalp. It's gonna keep the scalp in a healthy environment. You really want to stay away from a lot of the co-washing because co-washing is just going to continuously coat the area. It's not cleaning the area. And we wanna be able to calm down the inflammation. So those co-washes is going to be a no-no with um, scalp psoriasis. Also, you want to stay away from oils on the scalp. I have clients who say, well, I've tried castor oil. I did the rosemary along with the essential peppermint oil and my scalp is still inflamed. Or every time I oil it, I'm having to oil my hair every single day because it's just drier and drier because that's the inflammation, so it's happening inside the hair, not on the outside. So as much as you oil it, it's, it's really not, won't be beneficial. It's just going to keep you inflamed and keep those symptoms going. And also the bumps can get bigger. And that's another thing, reason why I want you to avoid the oils because it's causing those pustules to rise 
and these things can bleed. At times we've seen pus come from out of it. So it can be a really like nasty situation. Rice water, you wanna avoid the rice water. You wanna be careful too with the apple cider vinegar wash. Apple cider vinegar is pretty cool, but because you may have an open abrasion on the scalp, you don't want to aggravate the scalp and cause it to get worse. I would personally um, suggest seeing a professional. Also, um, a do is, is that I really want you to stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, cut down on any type of like sugary foods that you're eating. Believe it or not, too much starches, so like white potatoes, white rice. I um, have a lot of clients from the Caribbean islands. Um, so switch to things like brown rice is gonna be better. If you wanna do a potato, do like a sweet potato. You wanna eat a lot of green leafy vegetables. You wanna eat your fish. Fish is really high in omega-3s, which is gonna be crucial. Nuts is always gonna be good. Fruits such as your berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. The healthier that you're eating, it's going to help to calm down the inflammatory markers. And a lot of us don't connect inflammation of the scalp, with what we're putting inside of our bodies is that these things can also keep you inflamed and when we're trying to calm down the inflammation just eating the right foods can be so beneficial see if you look on a let's say a picture of the scalp you'll see that there is blood flow that is connected to where the hair follicle lives at so everything that you're eating is going to that hair follicle. So that's why the foods is just, you know, so important what you're putting into your system. So good quality foods. And then, like I said, most importantly, just stay hydrated. Okay, so let's talk about treatments. Are there any at-home treatments that you can do if you have folliculitis? I would say seek help from a professional first to see what stage your folliculitis is at and if that professional have an at-home system that you may benefit from then definitely totally do it and, or seek help from a professional and ask questions is this okay can i use this product professional treatments of course you have the prescription shampoos that's typically given when you have folliculitis sometimes you'll get um, clobetasol which is a medicated steroid that goes on the scalp to help calm down the inflammation i can say that as far as the steroids goes the a cream when it comes to my black clients is going to be way beneficial than you you're going in and getting scalp injections on the, on the scalp i'm just not a fan of scalp injections because it has so many different side effects and then also a dermatologist may give you doxycycline which is an antibiotic you know it can be beneficial but at the same time we know what antibiotics can do it's going to kill the good and bad bacteria and for some women it can lead to a yeast infection so some alternative options is going to be of course a shampoo that's going to be good for helping to calm down the inflammation that's on the scalp some of the things that we do here we actually have growth factors and cocktails that we can formulate that's designed specifically for the type of folliculitis you are experiencing and the reason why i say that is there are times where you can have folliculitis and you can also have hormonal hair loss male and female hormonal hair loss so we want to be able to tackle both parts or you can have a case of folliculitis in one area or in the other area you may have ccca because they're they're kind of both in the same family so that's why it's so important to make sure that you're seeking professional help when it comes to what type of treatment you should get but going back to the treatment so we can make these cocktails for you to help calm down the inflammation on the scalp that's going to be the first step is that hair will not grow if the scalp is in an unhealthy state so calming down the inflammation and one would say okay how long can it take well it just depends because um, these situations is very unique where our our dna is not the same so each of us is you know different so it may take you two weeks excuse me two months it may take someone else six months for us to calm down the folliculitis but it can definitely be calmed down and we have had so many successful cases where we were able to pretty much put the condition 
at a halt. So it's like, it's still there because you can't get rid of it, but it's dormant. And what we do is we teach you what your triggers are because there is gonna be some type of triggers. Okay, so is it something that you're putting on your scalp? Is it something that you're putting inside of your body as far as foods that you're eating? Or are you in an environment that's unhealthy and that's causing you to, your scalp to stay in, inflamed? So this is some of the things that you'll know when you're done with your, your treatments. So we're talking about scalp treatments and then we also do the laser light. We're doing red laser light and we also do blue laser light. So red laser light is really good because it's going to help put energy back into the heart of the cell. So whenever you're losing hair, you really wanna use that device because of what it can do. It can penetrate deep and go right into the heart of the cell. And then blue light. So blue light is very beneficial because it has great healing properties for the skin. We're talking about the folliculitis, we're talking about psoriasis. It really does help to put the, put the scalp in a healthier state for healing. And then we also use infrared LED light. That's really good because it has great wound healing benefits. It's creating circulation, it's creating, it's getting the blood flow flowing in the area. And it's not drying the scalp out because anyone that has folliculitis, you know that your scalp can have a distinctive look to it, but it also can be very dry. So these treatments does not dry the scalp out. And then of course, we use a lot of like water-based at home sprays. And those sprays is designed to also help calm down the inflammation, but also promote hair growth. Now let's get into supplements. So what vitamins is going to be beneficial? So instead of giving you an antibiotic, we are going to give you some natural supplements that's going to help calm down the inflammation from the inside. So maybe something like a black cumin seed oil can be very beneficial. Vitamin E can also be beneficial in a tocotrienol form because vitamin E helps to fight free radicals and it's really good for repairing the skin. That's one of the great benefits of, of vitamin E. So you have the black cumin seed oil, you have vitamin E, also lysine. I really like using lysine because lysine helps with tissue regeneration and it also helps with when the when you have the raised bumps on the scalp, the lysine can actually help to calm that down for you at a, at a good rate. And of course, omega-3 fish oil is always gonna be great for you. I have clients that act about turmeric. Turmeric is really good, but you wanna make sure that if you are using a turmeric powder that it have black pepper in it so that your body can absorb the turmeric. And then once we give you everything that you need as far as a vitamin standpoint for the inflammation, then we will get into things that we know that's going to help promote hair growth. And that vitamin E that I mentioned too is designed to help push your hair into an antigen phase, which is a, a longer growth phase. So that's something that we will also give you. But what I like to do, so what makes what I do here a little bit different than some is if you have lab work, I'm looking at your labs too. I'm looking to see, okay, on your blood level, do you have some inflammatory markers that's elevated? How is your white blood cells? Do you have any hormone imbalances? And we are touching on those areas while we're also treating your folliculitis. And the reason for that is, is because we can treat you for folliculitis, but I know you also want your hair to grow. And if we don't touch on those pieces, those contributing factors can slow down your progress. So if you have folliculitis or you know someone that has folliculitis and you wanna to speak to a professional or you need help, please go to our website and click on the evaluation to book an appointment and we will be happy to help you. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe and until next time, take care.